Baruch Hashem, Elokeinu Melech Olam. Shows. It's an interesting blessing. It translates to mean, Blessed are you, Lord, our God, King of the universe, creator of numerous living beings and their needs, for all the things you have created with which to sustain the soul of every living being. Blessed is he who is the life of the world. This blessing is one of three major blessings that we make after for food. Uh, the first blessing we make over bread, um, out of the five grains of wheat, barley, spelt, oat, and rye. And for bread, we have the, what we call the grace after meals, birchot hamazon. Then there's a blessing that we call me'en shalosh, and it loosely called the alamilchia. For the seven species of produce that are found, and they are the blessing of Eretz Yisrael, of Israel, which are wheat, barley, pomegranates, dates, figs, olives, and grapes. Again, oil and wine. And that's the other blessing. But everything else, everything else has one blessing. It's a blanket for everything. Called, again, the Berein Nefosh, the song I just sang. Berein Nefosh Rabos. Now, so, why did I decide to uh, compose a song for such a small little thing like this? The truth of the matter is, is for my children is where it really began. You know, one side of your brain is music and the other side is memory. And when you have a song, many times you can remember the words of the song by virtue of the fact of singing it. The Birchat Muslim, for example, is a very long prayer. But I know it by memory, as long as I sing it. <laughs> if I say it, well, I may not be so perfect. But if I sing it, I won't miss a word. Because when you sing, again, it connects with memory, and that, it's happening. So I created the song, composed the song, uh, once for my children, so they would be able to make this important blessing after they would have anything other than, again, bread or cake or whatever it might be, but most things. Now, what, when, I, when I did it also, I found many times, you know, we make blessings all the time. We do things out of rote. It doesn't really make an impression on our mind. So after I would make the blessing or not, I would ask myself, did I do it? Didn't I do it? And I really wasn't certain. But now what I do is I sing it. And when I sing it, I remember that I did it. And therefore I don't have to wonder, did I or did I not say it? Now, the way I translated it is the way, again, it's translated literally. But I believe there's a much greater lesson for us to learn to glean from these words. So I'd like to go over it again and translate this a little bit different as I see it. So the words Berei Nefosh Rabos, I, I translate as, he created many souls, but Chesronon al Kalmasha Barasa, and imbued each one with their own deficiencies. Why? So that, Hakayos Behem Nefesh Kol Chai, so that inst to instill within each person an enthusiasm for life. Blessed is he who gives his life to the world. Now, this is much more than food. What this blessing is really telling us is that everyone, everyone in this world is created with a challenge. Chesronon, a deficiency. No one is perfect. 
Perfection is something that we might, that we must strive for. We have to earn it. But that seems to be God's plan for mankind, to have an imperfect human being serve him. God, after all, if God wanted perfection, he didn't need to create man. He already had angels. It would seem that God, like any loving parent, takes special pride in watching his imperfect children striving to be the best that they can, overachievers. So why did God create us with deficiencies? The blessing continues and explains the Hakkayos behind Nefesh Chochai. To instill within us an enthusiasm for life. Why would deficiencies, though, create an enthusiasm for life? For whatever reason, known only to God Almighty, He created us in a way that we learn to appreciate things by contrast, by experiencing opposites, light versus darkness, hot versus cold, up versus down, happiness versus sadness, man versus woman, on and on. Think of it as a heart monitor, peaks and valleys. The lower the valley, the higher the peaks. As long as there are peaks and valleys, guess what? A person is healthy. If the line stops moving up and down and just goes straight across, well, you flatlined. That means your heart is no longer pumping. Sad news. You are dead. It's time to lie down. So opposites, ups and downs, are a national phenomena of living. God created us all with challenges. He has done so in the hope that we can truly feel the joy and satisfaction that one attains when they have conquered the greatest challenge in life, ourselves. Overcoming our deficiencies, our addictions, is that which gives us a true sense of living. Now, the question becomes, why do some people become mercenaries, take, be risk-takers, daredevils? Why do people watch horror movies and take ride on a roller coaster? The answer, because in that moment when you feel your life is on the line, when you feel like you're staring death right in the face, well, guess what? The rush of adrenaline gives a person the greatest feeling of living life. Many times, those born in a wealthy and illustrious family find life even more challenging than those that are born into poverty. When you have everything, when everything is given to you, it can rob you of the feeling of satisfaction that one receives when striving and succeeding. They may well feel that everything is coming to them. They have little appreciation. Nothing really has any value. It's much like the nachash, like the primordial snake. When God punished the snake, he said that he would eat, the snake would eat from the dust of the earth, which sounds like a blessing. There's always dust of the earth, but the dust has no taste, and that becomes the key. If you don't have to work for something, you don't have to achieve anything, it's tasteless. You know, the, those born into poverty have only one direction to move, up. Since they have little, they appreciate any and all things that they receive. Life has taught them to always look forward. They've come to realize that it is precisely the valleys, the difficulties, the challenges in our lives that give us the peaks, our joys and satisfaction. In fact, the lower the valley, the higher the peak. You know, they tell a story of a bank robber. And in the middle of his holdup, he gets shot three times. But somehow he wakes up and he's in a room and the first thing he does, he wakes up with a startle and, and he feels his body because he remembers getting shot. But somehow there's no blood, there's no bullet holes. He seems to be fine. He's kind of surprised. He's confused. He looks around the room and he realizes there's no windows, there's no door. He doesn't know where he is. All of a sudden a doorway appears and the door opens and in comes an old man, an elderly sage, with a white beard. And you can imagine the first question that this bank robber asked this old man is, where am I? The old man says, don't, not important. What can I do for you? Well, the banker says, well, I'm a little hungry. We have a good restaurant here, some women, you know, some, some, some casino. 
you know, and have a good time. The old man smiles and says, no problem. And he goes out, the food is great, the women are terrific, he wins at the casino. But the next thing he knows, he's in the bed again. Again, the room, no windows, no doors. And then, all of a sudden, the door appears, and again, the old man comes in. Again, the first question, where am I? The old man says, not important, what can I do for you? Well, again, women, restaurants, food, casinos, hold up a bank. Everything's perfect. Everything's perfect. It goes like clockwork. And again, he finds himself back, and this goes on day after day. And finally, one day, when the old man appears, the bank robber looks at him and says, I know where I am. The old man says, where are you? He says, I'm in hell. And the old man smiles and says, exactly. Hell is the place where everything goes right. Nothing goes wrong. Nothing has any meaning. What we live is the way we're supposed to live, to appreciate what we do. And the only way that we appreciate the fact that we have good is because not everything goes perfect. And that imperfection makes us, our lives, perfect. Again, let's remember to say this blessing every time that we eat something, again, other than bread or cake, and thank God for all that he gives. Baruch Ato Hashem Elo Keinu Melech Olom Borei Nifoshot Rabot V'chesronon Al Kol Mashe Berosu L'Hakiyos Behem Nefesh Kol Again, don't forget to push like and share and subscribe. And again, hope the tune catches you and you remember to make the blessing every day in every way. God bless. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for listening.